The site is 35 acres, up to three houses deep. What's on fire, nobody knows, but it seems to never stop burning. For 20 years, Launders Lane in Raynham was an illegal rubbish dump. At some point, around a decade ago, it was set alight. At times, the smoke is far worse than others. This summer, huge flames led to it being visible for miles, choking nearby streets. The people living here fear the air they breathe is poisoning them. So we decided to investigate. Christine has lung cancer. She was diagnosed a year after moving in with her son David, who lives close to the site. There's no evidence the two are linked, but the smoke is so bad, her consultant has told her to wear a mask even when indoors. It's like the invisible enemy. You don't know what is attacking you. All right, I'm 74, I've got a few years left, but my grandson's only six and he's breathing it in and everybody in Raynham, they have um, nosebleeds, sore throats, difficult in breathing. And he goes to a school right around the corner and what can I do unless I, I put him in a mask all the time? I'm, I'm scared what he's breathing in. I don't know what his future is going to hold, what sort of complications this is going to impose on him in the future. It's, it's a horrible feeling. I feel trapped that I can't do anything about it. We just need some help from someone. We need someone to stand up, take accountability. Anything could lie below these spewing columns of smoke. The former owner was jailed for drug and weapon smuggling. He used the site for storage. This playground is just a field away from the actual fire. And on certain days, you can almost taste the smoke. The way residents describe it is a kind of drying, acrid sensation at the back of the throat. And what they want to know is exactly what kind of pollution is coming off the site and what kind of effect it's having on their health and the health of their children. I got in touch with a team of environmental scientists at UCL. Dr Elizabeth Cooper agreed to put in measuring equipment at David's house, about 400 metres from the smoke. We monitored for two of the most damaging types of air pollution, both invisible to the naked eye. PM10 particles are just 10 microns across, so can easily get into the lungs. We found that in Raynham, average readings over the week we monitored were 16 micrograms per meter cubed. But next to the fire, it was 85% higher. On average, nearly 30 micrograms. PM2.5 particles are even smaller. They can potentially cause cancer, lung and heart disease and strokes. The average reading in Raynham was just over nine micrograms per meter cubed. At Launders Lane, our exclusive research found dangerous particulate matter was 70% higher, a mean of almost 16 micrograms, three times higher than the current World Health Organization guidelines. If these levels are truly staying this high or higher, um, then, then it's, um, I think it's, it's an unacceptable risk in the community. I mean, there's lots of things that this, these compounds um, they, uh, they get deep into our systems. They, uh, some of them can pass into our brain uh, across the blood-brain barrier. So, so um, they affect all our organs. We only monitored the site for nine days, so these are just initial results. The UCL team also analysed health data in the area. Again, these are preliminary results, but they found that rates of COPD, a group of serious lung conditions, are 50% higher in Raynham than the rest of London. Ella Kissy Deborah was the first person to have air pollution listed as a cause of death. Her mum, Rosamond, wants urgent action now in Raynham. We, as a nation, are judged by how we treat those most vulnerable. If you're stuck there, imagine living there and breathing that in on a daily basis. Unless we clean up the air, more people like my daughter are going to die. And that's where we are now. It is absolutely appalling this is going on. The council and the environment agency are aware of the site, of the smoke in Raynham. The issue is that the cost to fix this problem is more than £10 million. Those pollution numbers are are just incredible, Sam. I mean, who is responsible here?
Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about the, those figures. It's one of those stories, really, that you come across and you, you don't really believe it until you see it with your own eyes. And I remember when Comrade, the cameraman, and I put that drone up and saw those pictures and just thought, what, what is going on here? You ask about responsibility. It's a really interesting question. And the answer is, it's not entirely clear. And that is something we'll be looking at in depth tomorrow. Now, what air quality campaigners uh, like Rosamond, like Dr Elizabeth would say, is that the fact that this hasn't been dealt with, that this has been going on for 10 years, highlights a much wider problem. And that is what they would say is the inadequacy of the air pollution rules in the UK. Again, that's something we'll look at tomorrow, as is who's responsible. OK, thanks very much for that, Sam. Thank you.